And welcome back. You're listening to Hysteria, the podcast that is taking a break next week. That's not a joke. That's real. We're no, taking a break. We are. Next, we're taking a break next week. Uh, we rarely take breaks. We we work fairly constantly forever. Okay, uh, Fiona's still with us for Sanity Corner slash I Feel Petty. Alyssa, I'm going to have you go first. Sanity Corner or I Feel Petty? Uh, petty. Petty, okay. petty, petty. Good. A um, couple things. One, the New York Times really needs to rein in their threshold for pushing breaking news alerts. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me tell you why I start with that, because yesterday I got a breaking news alert that Ryan Seacrest will be the new Pat Sajak on Wheel of Fortune. God. Okay. Guys, does anyone at the table or in the studio believe that we need more Ryan Seacrest in our lives. No. Or that his move to Wheel of Fortune is worthy of any sort of breaking news alert. No. 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 But here's the thing that got me. After I was done being annoyed by the misuse of a breaking news alert, I was like, what the fuck? The low-hanging fruit move here was to make Vanna White, who has turned the letters on Wheel of Fortune for 40 years, Literally. the host. 40 years. It would have been so smart. She would have been on the cover of magazines. It would have been such a fucking good move. But we've got Ryan Seacrest, but guess what? Now Vanna White's got a lawyer. No. <laughs> because it turns out, and this is where I think maybe I transition into low-key Sandy, is that uh, it turns out that Pat Sajak was always making like 15 mil a year and she was maybe making three. <gasps> wow. And everybody knows uh, the numbers that Ryan Seacrest commands. So she has a big badass lawyer who I think is going to make sure Vanna either gets a big payday or, you know, maybe a, I'm telling you, if she got a book deal, I'd read that book and we would have her on this show. Oh, oh I would. Absolutely. I would turn every page with the elegance of Vanna White of turning a letter. Turning so a vowel. True. Yes, 100%. <laughs> so anyway, that's my Sandy Petty. I just, uh, fuck you. Oh, my fuck God. You. Can I just, I have a theory about why, like, Ryan Seacrest and Blake Shelton and America's, like, weird, like, most boring celebrities or, like, yeah. less, like, unappealing people keep getting like, plum gigs. Mm. Why? Um, so the first time I ever was, like, working in TV, we were, like, it, we were developing a show and you put it in front of, like, test audiences. Yep. And I learned that test audiences, the, the way that they put them together is like really unsophisticated they like go to a mall in las vegas and just like grab people that look regular that's so funny um, so like so like political focus groups same yeah, model. yeah 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 they just grab people that like look regular but it's literally like a shopping mall in las vegas like they're not going to like a bookstore and they're like oh there's a there's a big vegan cooking section here we're gonna grab people from here you know yes. they're not nobody with like a specialized interest or like a specialized amount of knowledge or whatever it's all just like average ass people yeah so i feel like someone like ryan seacrest is a las vegas shopping malls idea of like a cool guy so true you okay. know perfect yes, for normies i agree yeah i agree extremely palatable poor vanna white though like she's not just a mannequin no <laughs> she's a real person and i hope she gets some real money i know for yeah, real. she deserves it a hundred percent spin the wheel again Yes. Ryan. So true. All right. So here is. Yeah, I know. Here's Sorry. mine. Here's mine. Um, it is uh, next week's the 4th of July. Next Tuesday mm. is the 4th of July. And I live in Los Angeles. And there is. Uh, fireworks are illegal. You cannot own fireworks as a private citizen. As should be the case. And yet. <laughs> and and yet. yet. Fucking everyone has fireworks. Like every single place I've lived in this. T different neighborhoods. You know, different, completely different areas. Uh, there are fireworks going off that are just set off, just like freelance, you know, just. <laughs> and, you know, when I this I've, I've only been here for five years, but it has gotten progressively worse. There's a fireworks creep going on. Fireworks have been going off in my neighborhood for the last week. And they're going oh off. My God. I know. And they're going off after dark, so after eight p.m. So here's. Oh the, no! It's too early. It's, they waken the baby. They, Way too early. They wake the baby. 
first of all, a lot of people have babies. Yeah. And even if you don't have babies, you're entitled, you know, you're entitled to a child-free life, but not a child-free world. Also, when you get old, other people's babies are going to keep the infrastructure running. So yeah. you should have a little bit of consideration for the fact that other people, you know, eat, live your life, but don't like explode your life so that other people can't live theirs. So also people have dogs and I, yes, I don't. And cats. I, dogs. They do, no, these do not, animals do not like the sound. It's no. scary to them. And I, and I think that the 4th of July, fine. We could have one holiday where people light off fireworks and stuff, but in the week up to the 4th of July, it is that's excessive. And if you live near other people and those people might have pets, they might have children, or, you know, they might just be sensitive and not like loud noises. And Or maybe they work a shift where they have to go to bed at 6 p.m. and wake up at yes. 4 in the morning. Like, be fucking aware that other people exist. That's all. If you want to practice setting off fireworks before the 4th of July to make sure that you won't mess it up, just <laughs> go to the middle of the desert. It's so easy uh-huh. to do and that And safe. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's gender ridiculous. reveal parties have taught us most Americans should not have access <laughs> to fireworks or things that can create smoke. Talk True. about a Venn diagram. People that should True. not have access yep. to fireworks there we and go. people who have gender reveal parties. Yes. A circle. <laughs> I was going to say, they are some of the dumbest. <laughs> They're they awful. are some of the dumbest. But also, like, there's so much nothing in California. People, right. and, and it is so close. It is so close to get to a bunch of nothing. Literally. Just practice there. Also, like, if you live in a city and you're really close to people and you've no place to practice and fireworks are illegal, maybe fireworks aren't in the cards for you. Right, right. Maybe you should just accept defeat and, like, let the pros do it themselves. Buy buy a whatever meta Oculus headset and watch a fireworks (laughs) display on there. Right. Uh, And it'll be immersive and you won't bother anybody. Because, like, Jesus Christ, like, fuck off. I'm sorry, fuck off. Anyway, uh, Fiona, that leaves you. Um, I'm going to end on a good note. Um, This is inspired by my interaction at Starbucks this morning. Whoa. um, And also just my life. Um, I walked into Starbucks. I was ordering my iced oat milk latte, classic gay beverage. Um, (laughs) Even I'm not in the community, and I know that. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, I know. I know. Everybody knows. Um, It's a dead giveaway. Um, Listen, if you want to know, it's like flagging. You know how people would flag if they were queer or not? Like... People would put different flags in their back pockets. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the contemporary version of that is ordering an iced oat milk latte. That's what my husband <laughs> orders. <laughs> and I and I did. T- I was like, you know, that in you know, that I'm like, <laughs> ha, you know, that's considered a signifier by many in the queer community. <laughs> and he's like. No, it's not. And then you just okay. <laughs> all right. Well, he's like, I love my drink. Yeah, he's 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 secure. And he's a, a strong ally. He's a is strong. All that it is. He's a strong um, ally. But I walked in and the barista was like, Oh my god, I like your shirt and your hair and your tattoos. And I was like, Oh my god, that is so nice of you. And then on my um, on my way out, somebody was also like, I like your hair because I told them I like their hair. Um, so there's that. And then also, I live in a neighborhood of L.A. called Frogtown. I love it over there. It's wonderful. People are always like, L.A. is not a walkable city. I think if you stay in your neighborhood and pick, if you can, pick where you live, like, based on the walkability of a neighborhood, like, y- you can totally make that happen. I walk to coffee shops all the time. I love my baristas. There's this vegan bakery in my neighborhood called Just What I Needed, woman-owned, amazing. Um, all the baristas know who I am now because I go there all the time. They give me the neighborhood d- discount. So my Sani is befriending baristas yes they are agree. so kind just like it's the little moments in your day you know what i mean being a regular at a coffee shop feels so good you're like look at me i'm investing in my community i'm making this place feel like home i feel like you befriend a barista your neighbor will see you befriend a barista you will maybe befriend your neighbor or they will befriend the barista it's just about building community in the little ways um and it makes getting to go get your little treat beverage feel a little extra good so fee i have to tell you about my favorite barista oh please flashback 1998 okay Mm. i'm living in soho there's this one place called puerto rican imports great coffee place and all of my roommates and i would go there all the time and then one day i started showing up like not at seven o'clock but at 10 o'clock and steve as his name would be was like how come you're here now (laughs) and i was like 
I don't have a job. Aaron, it was when I quit being a secretary at Merrill Lynch. Mm. And he started giving me free day old corn muffins because he knew I had no money. And then the other barista, Craig, was missing. And I was like, where did Craig go? And he's like, he got his big break. He's like a cadaver on Law and Order. And to this day, when we see Craig on any order, any episode of Law and Order, all of our old roommates text it. And we're like, fucking cheers to Craig. (laughs) I love that so much. I love like being looped into the drama of the baristas too. Yes, 100%. Tell me everything. It's amazing. I, so we were talking about the ultimatum on this show. Um, I There's a coffee shop really close to the office that I go to all the time. Every single barista is gay. Um, I know this. Um, <laughs> I like walked in one time they were talking about the ultimatum and I was like, oh my God, guys, I, I'm not fully caught up yet. I will let you know when I am. We'll talk about it. I came back like a week or two later and one of the baristas, I was like meeting someone for coffee. One of the baristas came up to me, over to me at the table that I was sitting at um, and they were like, hey, um, I saw that you were here and you haven't come to talk to us about the ultimatum yet and I just want to let you know that we're waiting. (laughs) Uh, That's amazing. It was awesome. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, Yeah, I got to give a shout out to Silver Lake Coffee, aka SLC. Let's go. That's one of my fave local spots. We went there. Didn't we go there? Uh, We went to, no, we went to Highland Park Cafe. Mm. Oh, okay. But that place is great too and then Cafe Cafe Leche is also really good Mm. on York in Highland Park. Yes, yes. This is all inside baseball talk. It is, but um, you know what's, Aaron, one quick thing what's even funnier is that this morning when I went to go get my quad shot latte dry don't ask for why I ask for a latte dry (laughs) uh the barista was like what are you and Aaron gonna talk about today (gasps) and when they listen to the pod and see that we talked about baristas it fees prompting you guys this is like the most full circle episode we've ever done it says it's full circle and we will continue to spin around for the next two weeks while we while we take a much deserved rest Fiona, thank you so much for coming on the mic today. Oh, my God, of course. Thank um, you for thank having you, me. It was a lot of fun of and a, a baller of a Sandy Petty debut, for Ugh, sure. Thank yes. you. Uh, listeners, thank you so much for sticking with us. We love you. We can't wait to come back in a couple weeks. There will be more hysteria then. <laughs>